All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to everyone on this uh, call and this conference call. Uh, joining us for today's EIM Deeper Dive. We're uh, in for a real treat today. We have a really great presentation from our team in EIM Italy. Um, just before we get started and I turn things over, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, the EIM Deeper Dive is something we started 10 months ago, um, instead of hosting EIM global webinars on topics, we thought this would be a good opportunity to have short webinars that feature some of the work that's going on in other countries. So if you have something going on in your country you'd like to share, we'd sure love to feature your work. So please do reach out and uh, we can get you involved with this. The whole point here is to focus on one topic, not everything an international uh, national center is doing, but one topic. And, and really deep dive into it and explain. And then the presentation I think today is gonna to be 20, 25 minutes with time for discussion and questions afterwards. So, you know, we really want this to be interactive. We want this to be discussion, um, sharing. So please write down questions, please come uh, ready to engage and be involved and uh, we'll go from there. So as I mentioned, today's presentation is uh, from Daniel representing EIM Italy. They recently launched a, a new online training program. I'm gonna stop there um, because he can explain it a lot better than I. But uh, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about this. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Yes. Hello, Mark. And hello to everybody and the different directions of the globe. We in Italy are somewhere in between. <laughs> so it's lunchtime here in Italy and I would like to share my screen so I can just give me a quick feedback if you can see the screen, if everything is, is working. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Then I will I will start with the presentation and then thank you, Mark, for this uh, for this uh, nice introduction and also for giving me for giving us the opportunity to share uh, this initiative with you and with the whole AIM Global Network. Um, I'm really blessed. It's a pleasure for me to to present you this uh, new project. It's I'm also a little bit proud of it. Uh, and I present it on behalf of the whole team of exercises medicine in Italy, obviously. And this is it's a new massive open online course entitled Exercise in Medicine from Functional Evaluation to Adapted Exercise Training, which we have recently published on the on the Future Learn uh, platform. And it's it's not just exercise is medicine in Italy, but we have uh, here included a lot of uh, high level national and international experts who helped us in creating this course and somehow uh, I'm sure that they have also uh, improved it a lot uh, regarding the content so it's a it's not just an Italian project it's somehow um, an international project international educational project and I would like to start uh, I hope the video is is working um, and I would like to show you the trailer of this massive open online course, which you can find on Future Learn. Sorry. Have you ever heard about the exercise bill? No, it's not a magic pill you take to replace exercise. It's a means to treat patients with chronic diseases. The science behind is clear. Physical activity and exercise training positively impacts on a variety of chronic pathologies. It helps to prevent and treat diseases. Despite these clear benefits, its implementation in real world setting is currently still limited. So that's why we are here, to spread this good news. Whether you are a healthcare or an exercise professional.
or a student particularly interested in the promotion and implementation of physical activity and exercise therapy, or if you simply want a healthier world, that's the course for you. We will discuss how the Global Alliance of Exercise in Medicine is trying to translate scientific evidence related to the exercise bill in good clinical practice. And we will try to find solutions how to integrate it in the healthcare system. You will develop and improve your skills on prescribing tailored exercise according to the evaluation of cardiovascular, pulmonary, metabolic and peripheral limitations in patients with different chronic diseases. Then you will learn how to implement exercise programs also adopting digital health technologies to improve compliance and motivation. We will explore the benefits of exercise throughout a person's life and in special populations such as cancer survivors, post-solid organ transplantation patients, children and adults with congenital heart diseases and people with different disabilities. Moreover, we will discuss the effect of the environment and therefore we will learn how to safely train from the peak of the mountains to the depth of the sea. Together with high-level international experts, we will learn and share best practices of exercise as medicine. Um, can you still see the... Okay. Sorry about the poor quality of the of the video, but it's it's not easy with with Zoom to to share the videos. But we will send you the link, and you can see it then um, on the homepage of the course. Okay. Then I will uh, continue just with the with the presentation of the of our project. Can you see this light? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. sorry about this. But yeah. for me, it's not easy to switch between the screens. Sorry about this. Um, yeah, well, as you have seen, uh, this course, um, this, is the, this was the trend of the course, which is also published on Future Learn. So you can uh, see it also uh, quite easily on, on, the, on the web. We have, um, Organize this course in five weeks. The duration is five weeks, and uh, students will engage probably more or less four hours weekly in this course, and it's one hundred percent available online on the platform Future Learn. Some course details: it's a five weeks course, and each week is organized in them in four to five activities. And each activity has included different educational steps for a total of 75 educational steps, meaning that we have 13 videos, 70 podcasts, five panels, quizzes, surveys, but not just them, but also other insights from experts, articles, infographics, exercises and discussions, as well as, as some references for further readings. This is a, an open access educational project, a nonprofit initiative from the University of Padova, which is freely available on, on Future Learn. Uh, the only thing is that you have with this free access, you have a time limited access for these five weeks of the course. If you want a non limited access, an unlimited subscription, and an official course certification, then you have to pay uh, a platform fee. This is not a fee that, uh, these are not money which are coming back to us. These are just somehow the fee which Future Learn is asking us uh, for the publication of this course. However, if um, universities have a convention with Future Learn, this would, would mean that all students of this university have unlimited and free access uh, for all uh, massive open online courses, plat 
published on future learning. Who is this course for? Well, obviously it's for medical doctors, not for medical doctors who are already experts in this field, but for those who want to learn basics regarding exercise prescription, also based on functional evaluations. It's obviously for exercise professionals who should uh, learn how to understand exercise prescription and also to design individually adapted exercise programs. It's obviously also very interesting for physiotherapists who might be, uh, who should be able to apply training programs in rehab facilities, but don't forget other healthcare professionals because we need them to educate patients, we need them to communicate with patients. And so this is also one of the targets of our course. It's very interesting for university students of different allied professionals and since it is a massive open online course, uh, one of the objectives of this course is also to educate the general population to promote physical activity and exercise for primary and secondary disease prevention. We simply want to get some more visibility for this exercise bill with this course. Now, I would like to briefly discuss and to present the course content. And for this, I will switch to this infographic. And I hope that you can see it. Mark, if you can give me a... Okay, perfect. Uh, this, is, this is what this course is about. You can see here the five weeks of the course. The first week uh, will address the benefits of exercise regarding the prevention and treatment of chronic diseases. The second week is then a more, more practical one where we will discuss how to uh, adapt exercise prescriptions and exercise implementations based on functional evaluations. In week three and four, we will then discuss the practical point, so exercise prescriptions and exercise programs for patients with cardiovascular and pulmonary limitations in week three, and in week four for patients with metabolic and peripheral limitations to exercise. In the final week, which is week five, we will then address uh, how to adapt exercise training for special populations and based on different environmental conditions. So each of this week has been organized in five, four to five activities. So for example, week one, the first activity is called take the first step, which is an activity which is somehow introducing our, our online course. Uh, each activity has then the uh, before mentioned educational steps, which means videos, articles, uh, podcasts and whatever. In the second activity, um, which is called Let's Get Physical, we will show evidences regarding the impact of physical activity and exercise on different chronic conditions, while uh, during bridging the gap from playing to sports, we will address how different initiatives, projects, uh, will try to translate scientific evidence in a real world setting in good clinical practice. Each week is then concluded with a synthesis where we share the key points of the week and where we give also a sneak preview of the, uh, of the subsequent week. In week two, um, we will start our activity with uh, exercising with chronic conditions where we will discuss the importance for adapting exercise training for patients with chronic diseases. And subsequently, we will then discuss how to evaluate patients and how to adapt exercise prescriptions and programs based on these functional evaluations. The activity Let's Move uh, is then a more practical activity where uh, students and learners will uh, learn uh, how to design an exercise program addressing also patients' barriers and also um, in order to write, also to find the, the right, to find the right motivation for our, for our patients. Uh, in, in these weeks, we have included also insights from experts. 
Uh, in this case, the content of this activity is related to, uh, to changes of lifestyles and how can we help our patients to change lifestyle with psychological tools, but also with digital uh, health tools. Um, in the subsequent week three, then we will go more into the clinical details and we will discuss uh, how to adapt exercise programs, uh, exercise implementation strategies based on the functional limitations. In this case, based on cardiovascular limitations to exercise. And we have a specific focus on a, a very important population, a very increasing population, which is which are children and young adults with congenital heart diseases. We will then discuss pulmonary diseases and how we have to adapt exercise prescriptions, exercise programs uh, in order to be able to bypass these ventilatory limitations to exercise and to thereby guarantee somehow a good uh, cardiovascular and metabolic training adaptations. In the insights from experts of week three, we will then address how artificial intelligence and also how digital health applications could be useful for our mission, for our vision of exercise in medicine. Week four uh, continues with some um, with the clinical part, and we will discuss the impact of exercise training and physical activity on metabolic diseases uh, with a specific focus on diabetes and patients with obesity. In the activity called barriers, uh, we will um, show uh, how, how the exercise pill is a very useful treatment opportunity for the warriors. Uh, in this case, uh, more specifically cancer survivors and patients after solid organ transplantation. And last but not least, we will also address those functional limitations which are due to peripheral uh, health conditions, which could be vascular uh, problems, neurological problems, or also orthopedic problems. In the last insights from experts, we are uh, here addressing healthy aging, the impact of exercise on healthy aging, and the importance of including also nutrition uh, in this counseling because this may further improve the impact of our physical exercise training intervention. The last week of our Massive Open Online course, I will discuss in the first activity the impact of exercise in the lifetime continuum with a, with a specific focus also on pregnancy. We will then uh, share um, some practical take home message with our learners regarding how to um, handle patients with uh, disabilities, also regarding precautionary measures. And we will discuss the impact of exercise and physical activity on mental health conditions, but also vice versa, how sports, if overdosed, for example, may have a negative impact on different mental health uh, um, diseases. Last but not least, before concluding our course, uh, we address in, the, in this activity, the impact of the env environment on exercise training, on exercise prescriptions. Can our patients train in hot and cold environments? Can our patients go to higher altitudes in the mountains to engage in exercise training? Can our patients uh, um, train in water? Can they engage in diving, scuba diving, breath hole diving? Is this something healthy? Is this something useful? And then the final activity, putting it all together, concludes then our massive open online course and patients can uh, engage in the final exam. So this is, um, this is what is this uh, course about. This is the course content uh, of our massive open online course. And um, this is how it looks on the Future Learn platform. This is the homepage here. And the homepage brings us then to the five uh, course weeks. And each of these 
course week here, for example, you can see week one has the different uh, activities. Take the first step, let's get physical, bridging the gap. And each activity has four to five educational steps. For example, here, um, the step 1.5 called Safe or Risky. This is a, an interactive quiz where we ask some, some questions to our students and they will get the correct answer, but they will also get uh, a specific feedback uh, with specific learning outcomes for, for this step. So this is how the platform looks like in, on the homepage. And this is an example of step 1.9, which is called exercise is medicine. This is our step of our network, a global and inclusive alliance for a healthier world. And you can see here, um, this is the reason why I have asked Mark to, to, to organize uh, some videos of uh, different exercises, medicine, national centers all over the globe, because we wanted and we have then included their initiatives on this uh, Padlet map, uh, where you can then uh, see the different videos of the different national centers presenting their initiatives. And thanks to all of you who have already contributed to this, um, to this step of the course. And if there is someone who would like to, to send us the video of, of the National Center, or who would like to, to put it on the Padlet, him, him or herself, then we would be happy uh, to, to get new content for this map. So what are the learning outcomes? Um, we, we've tried to, to, to get some, or to, yeah, to develop, practical learning outcomes. So uh, our students, our learners should be able to explain and communicate the benefits of physical exercise because communication is, is important also when talking to patients. We uh, want that our learners are able to complete and interpret an evaluation of patients' level of physical activity, the physical activity vital sign, but also regarding uh, patients' exercise capacity, how to evaluate our patients' cardiorespiratory fitness. They should be able to articulate exercise prescriptions, addressing also patients' compliance and also their barriers. And finally, they should be able to, um, to design an exercise program for different chronic diseases, diseases, for special populations, but also considering environmental conditions. This is our the the specific learning outcomes. However, one of our uh, main objectives was also to, uh, to develop a network with colleagues, with allied and aff affiliated professionals and where all can share their experiences, where all can uh, contribute to develop a network, uh, a global network with different in international initiatives. This is the first impact. We have published uh, this massive open online course one and a half months ago, and we are now um, we have now 800 uh, course registrations. Uh, there are many doctors and exercise professionals, as well as university students, as you can see. But not all of them have uh, great experience with exercise prescriptions. More than 30% have no really good experience with this uh, topic. And uh, regarding the first feedback, we are quite um, happy with this because um, uh, learners uh, stated that they were able to improve their skills and knowledge regarding this topic. They were quite satisfied with this course and they would also suggest it to, to their colleagues. They were also happy with the course material and also with the teaching method which have been provided. We do actually also measure the impact of the exercise prescription skills. This is not the real measurement. This is just a kind of auto evaluation from on a zero to four, to four uh, scale. And you can see that the massive open online course improve this auto evaluation, but we will then provide also more concrete and more specific data regarding the impact the, uh, of, the, of the course on prescription skills, 
based on really clinical cases, which we will, which the students have to have to, um, to develop. Um, last but not least, uh, it was not just a, a project focused on an online course. We have designed this project also as a blended university teaching. This means that we use the content that we have created for the mock also for working with our students in class, uh, meaning that we integrate the mock content with in-class learning activities. So in class, we do brief lectures with the students, we do article presentations, we look some, we watch some videos, but then we do a lot of discussions regarding clinical cases, regarding exercise prescription, we do also some role playing, and at home, our students engage in autonomous online activities working on the online content available at the platform, but somehow, and, and for some lessons, they need also to prepare before the lesson in order that, they, in order that we can discuss in classroom then the different issues. What we uh, do promote also for our students is this international peer-to-peer -peer discussion, peer-to-peer education, which is an added value for our students because they can collaborate with international students, with international experts, and, and they can learn from each other. We have proposed this massive old online course for our second cycle degree course for exercise professionals and also for medicine and surgery. Uh, to conclude, I would just like to thank uh, all all of those institutions and collaborators, the Sports and Exercise Medicine Division, the Department of Medicine, uh, also the University of Padua, who, um, which provided this educational grant for this project, the team of digital learning and multimedia, who helped us a lot in providing all these digital contents, the team of Exercises Medicine Italy with all these uh, persons who collaborated particularly on this project, Obviously, big thanks also to Mark, to the AM Global Team and Network, because they endorsed this course. They um, helped us in organizing the videos, and uh, they helped us also in promoting this, this course on a global, in a global network. Also, the European Initiative for Exercise in Medicine um, helped us uh, during the course development, and big thank you to all of, of the national centers who have already provided the videos. And we hope that we can get some more videos of, of, of our colleagues all over the world. And obviously, thanks to the international experts who helped us for this course. Last but not least, and I conclude, uh, we are quite good in promoting this course at a national level, but we are not that good in promoting it at an international level. And so this is why we need your help. We ask you for your help. Please share it in your countries, share it in your networks, use it for your students and for your team and promote it in your conferences. We are also happy to share the course contents, the videos, the podcasts, the, the infographics. You can have them. Uh, they are of high quality because the platform requires high quality uh, digital uh, material. Please just put the mock reference and we are happy to share them. If you need flyers, brochure, banners or slides, we have them available. Just, uh, just uh, ask for them. And that's it. I'm happy to discuss this project with you and thanks for, for your opportunity again. Right, <clears throat> wonderful job. Um, just just, just again, this phenomenal. Um, I, I can only imagine how much at work it took. And so I, that's actually my first question. Um, Daniel, can you share with us a couple of things? Like what, what was your, what was the overall purpose when EIM Italy sat down? What would you say, look, why did you want to develop this course? Um, and, and then talk about a little bit. I mean, we, we can see that board with all the, you know, planning. How much, how much work did you say, do you think it would took you to put this all together? 
Yeah, I the, the last part of the questions, I, I didn't hear it. The last part. I sorry, yeah, my, my connection's bad too. Last part was uh how much work do you think it all took? planning and building this together. Yeah, uh, this was um, actually the idea of this massive open online course uh, goes back to, I'm not sure, three or four years, because our university was really pushing for this kind of, of initiatives, because one of our main objective is also to educate the general population. And uh, so uh, this was then the first idea to, to, to organize uh, something like this, because uh, in this period, we were also pushing with Exercises Medicine Italy to create some more vis visibility in Italy, but also at the international level. So it was somehow, okay, we could do something useful for the university. We could do something useful for the population, and we could use it also to push a little bit our initiative, which was starting uh, some years ago. And uh, yeah, we actually we are not aware of the of the amount of work we we would need to to engage in because it was one and a half year of work and a lot of um, yeah we we needed a, a lot of help also outside from our group because all this all this digital support this is something we cannot uh, provide we don't have the skills to do it and so um, yeah this is how it how it starts started i i have one more question and maybe then you know teeing up other people for their questions you know, one, one thing for EIM national centers is they're trying to think about how to also generate revenue. And, and I'm seeing EIM Singapore here, they, they do trainings, they charge fees, they make money, it helps sustain some of their activities. Yours is essentially free. What was the conversation about, you know, potentially generating revenue versus offering this as a free MOOC? Um, yeah, the, yeah, this is a good question. On, on one hand, uh, we like the open access educational project because we think that a lot has to be done regarding education and the promotion of physical activity and the exercise bill. So if you compare it with pharmaceutical industry where there are people are going to the hospital and knocking on the doors and say, we want to sell this, Nobody's doing this for the exercise bit. And so we like the idea to provide open source educational projects because I think that we need to do a lot in this regard. So train healthcare professionals regarding the impact of, of, ex of the exercise period of exercise prescriptions. On the other hand, you are right. It could be a, we have created, we have done a lot of work. We have created a lot of material and we don't get any money out of this. Is this something sustainable? I don't know. The good point is that all this material which we have created is now published on Future Learn, but it's all our property. And so we can use it however we want. So we can also take some parts of the course and then sell it differently. So it, we can use it, adapt it, and do whatever we want with this course material. Excellent. Thank you. Any, any questions from our, our members? Anyone on the call here has any questions for Daniel or comments even? Ivy, Victor, I, I know that you all have a training in Singapore. I know it's mostly in person. Have you ever given thought to doing more of an online version or um, potentially something that's free for the public like this? Hi, Mark, Ivy here. Um, I think we are sort of taking off online, but the, I guess the main issue is like you mentioned the sustainability. How do we keep it going? Um, I, I think if it's 
if it's a free course that may for us at this point in time pose an issue on how to sustain this and keep this going. Yeah. I think the other issue, hi, I'm Victor here from us, uh, from Singapore. Yeah. So um Sorry about the background. I'm currently covering the national team in uh, major games in Southeast Asia. So um, I think the issue here with free courses, um, I mean, it's just something to take note of is while free is good and everyone's uh, trying to ask for free stuff, but uh, when you give it free to the population, uh, somehow maybe people don't appreciate and they don't attend or they attend and they you know kind of like disappear halfway. So it ends up being like a cost that uh, you you may potentially see like 50% completed and nothing happens after that. And you're wondering what the drop off uh, happens uh, after as well. But nonetheless, uh, I do appreciate what's going on with uh, Daniel's work because he's trying to be all encompassing. And I saw that there are many, many interesting topics in the five weeks. But uh, I just have a question for Daniel, which is, um, this part on your course, while it's said to be free, but when I scan in on a QR code, it actually says $20 per month. So I'm just wondering, is it free or is it really a chargeable cost uh, like what Mark mentioned? Yeah, thanks, Victor, for the question. No, it's free. Uh, you see on the web page, you just see the, the, the costs if you if you want to have the unlimited subscription. If you then scroll down, you can you can also continue with the free version. And if you continue with the free version, you have a time limited access, which means that you, you have these five weeks for the course to conclude it. And then it will be closed, then you have to pay. But if you do it in these five weeks, which is the course duration, then it's free. So it's, it's somehow, okay, you, you have to pay if you want to have it always, but if you want to really engage, it, you can do it also for free, just by concluding in, in the five weeks. Uh, just something to think about. I, I'm, I'm just spinning ideas because uh, at the end of the day, this is a unilateral one-sided kind of course whereby all the information is out for the learners. But uh, something to think about is whether you want to get any information back from the learners in terms of how much is the retention and potentially uh, what they feel and how they perceive the course so that it can be refined over time and uh, whether something more can be done out spinning a research out uh, to find whether this is more effective versus face-to-face -face and so on and so forth, yeah. Okay, also thanks for this question. This is already implemented. So we, uh, we have, um, our course is always available, but we have uh, organized two facil facilitation periods. One was in May, in April, and the next facilitation period is in autumn, which means that we have uh, experts uh, facilitating during the, the, the course, uh, during the discussions, in the exercises, uh, in the comment section, because every single step has a comment section and students can interact with us, but also in a peer-to-peer um, manner in education. Okay, this is the first thing. So there are there are facilitation periods. So we are not always available, but learners know that in certain points of the years there is a facilitation period where we will be um, present and where we will engage actively with our students. Regarding the second point, uh, yes, we have already implemented a feedback. We have uh, the students will engage in the first step in a survey where we will try to find out their background, where we will try to characterize them. And they have also to complete three clinical cases, three standardized clinical cases. And uh, they do also a kind of auto evaluation of their abilities and skills regarding exercise, prescription, and programming. After the course, we do the same survey again. 
So this is what I've shown you regarding this auto evaluation. So they feel that they can, they are, have improved their skills, their abilities, but we do also measure the impact on the clinical cases. So we have standardized clinical cases, which are guideline-based cases. Uh, we know what the answers should be. And we, we are comparing them the, before the course and after the course, if something has changed regarding their abilities. So for research, also to give some, some data on the impact of this course. Daniel, I'll just, you know, one of the points Victor made, I also was confused about whether it was free or not when I signed up. So it might be something when you send messages out to people is just a little bit of instructions on that you have to scroll down to get to the free part and, and how that works. So um, we have a question, Christophorus, I think is referring to your classes, uh, not the online MOOC, but the classes themselves and wondering if they were synchronous, asynchronous, or how you offered those to your students uh, at Padova. Okay, yeah, obviously the, the mock, the online course is, is asynchronous of everything. So uh, regarding the, the class activities, we have, um, so it's also Francesca here, we are, organi we are um, organizing together it for our students. And what we are doing is, uh, that um, we uh, say to the students before the lesson what they need to prepare. So they at home, they, they, they have to engage in different steps and then they come to class and we will discuss in class the different things, clinical cases, exercise prescriptions. We do some role playing, we do some implementation discussions, whatever. And then they have to continue to work on this course content at home with other activities. So it's a kind of interaction between synchronous class activities in presence in, 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 um, in the university setting. And then they do some homework uh, wherever they want, whenever they want. And, um, and some intermediate evaluations uh, during uh, after each course week. This is how it, it works. So it's a same kind of combination between synchronous and asynchronous activities online and in presence uh, with our students. Daniel, a follow up to that. Is there, I mean, this is really, really great innovative stuff. Is there any thought to kind of spread that idea to other medical schools and medical programs in Italy? Yeah, we have uh, actually we we have um, we have been asked the first time that this happened that we have been asked by a, an international uh, course in medicine and surgery to uh, to provide this mock as an open um, as a, how to say as an optional course for for this for this uh, faculty. And we have been also contacted by the, the how, how is it called, from Technogym, the Wellness Foundation. The Technogym has a wellness foundation who, who engages in education and health promotion. And they asked us information on, on, on this course and how it was developed and how they can, they have actually also promoted it and how, can they, how they can, could use it also for their reasons. So yes, it was, uh, we were happy with this first impact at least. There was another question, I think. Oh. Ah, sorry. Not yet, not yet. So do you, you know, I mean, we have people from, you know, Upal's from Sri Lanka. Um, we have some folks from uh, Latin America. You know, do you have any advice if people want to create something like this uh, for the future? And, and you know, what, what are the lessons you've learned? Obviously, it was more work than you expected, right? It always is. But uh, what, what, what other nuggets of knowledge could you share with folks? Yeah, it's, um, I, it's, it's, a, 
if you want to publish on future learn it's a it's a it's it's a publication so uh, you need to 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 agree on their instructions for authors they will give you feedback they uh, need high quality material otherwise you will not publish it they have uh, certain timelines and uh, you need help you need you cannot do this on your own you need uh, help from uh, let's say digital media services you need also some uh, funding uh, because uh, these are things uh, which cost money and you need a big team because uh, um, it's not just that you have to design the course you have then a lot of educational steps and someone has to develop this educational step and it's a, it's almost 80 educational steps which have have to be provided written uh, registered uh, also um, revised by external reviewers and then published so there are different steps and it's a long process because you would like you would want also to give a quality a high quality course and not just putting the material on a, on a web page and this is something which requires a lot of uh, a lot of uh, team force and we have it here in italy we have uh, a nice group of, of young and motivated people and, and they all engaged in this project otherwise it would not have been possible to do it Just responding to the one question, we I'll work with Daniel to get a link to the video. We'll send a recording of this session and and some of the other materials that he has. Um, it, it's it's quite spectacular all the work and everything they put together. So, uh, Daniel, I I I think maybe this is a good time to end it. It was it was perfect timing. Um, nice discussion and questions and. Just a really great look at, at at what you and the team have put together. So congratulations to you and and thank you for taking the time to share this with us today. Yeah, thank you. And again, if you would, we would be really happy if you could help us to to promote this course also in your nations because what we don't, we are, what we are not able to do is to to promote it internationally. And it and we are happy to share the material with you. You can use it however you want. Uh, so just let me know and then we will send, send it to you. All right. And thank you to everyone for showing up today and being part of this uh, webinar. Appreciate your attendance and uh, we look forward to hosting another one, hopefully late July, uh, June or early July. And uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.